Hi, I'm Jaris Tab, a VCU Health Science student with Dr. Will Carter, a rehabilitation physician within the Massey Cancer Center. It's great speaking with you today. Thank you for having me. Can you start by telling me a little bit about why it's important for cancer patients to exercise after treatment? Yeah, so there's many reasons why it's important. Your oncologists are treating you with medication, surgery, radiation, to the best of their knowledge and resources. Using the analogy of cancer as a fight, thinking of yourself as a survivor, even with the best technology and equipment, you wouldn't send a soldier to war without basic training and conditioning. It's sometimes overlooked what you can do to help fight the cancer and make life the most worth living. What do you find patients are overlooking, despite having such large healthcare teams already? The impact of their choices and actions can be overlooked. Some people choose to smoke, drink, overeat junk food or other vices. In honesty, we, we all have our bad habits and things we could do better to care for ourselves. As a rehab professional, it's not my job to choose your values or to tell you what you must do but really rather to guide and assist you in fulfilling your goals and provide you the education and resources to the best of your ability to succeed. How effective can these lifestyle changes be? Yeah. So we know that 40% of cancer in the U.S. is due to lifestyle and that lifestyle changes can improve cancer outcomes. Today we will focus on exercise because of its large impact in this area. As more research is being done, it's starting to become the standard of care that patients with cancer diagnoses be referred to rehab services at the time of diagnosis for cancer treatments. Can you explain some of the specific improvements and outcomes exercise can impact? So yeah, there's many reasons why it's important to exercise throughout the process. Several of them include that the actual treatment process is improved when going through an exercise program. Another reason is because it can help prevent recurrence of that cancer, new cancers, and heart disease, which is the major cause of death if surviving from cancer. Thirdly, it's exceedingly beneficial in preventing and combating many of the side effects of cancer treatment, including fatigue, anxiety, poor sleep, neuropathy, heart failure. Finally, someone who is more fit can tolerate more cancer treatments and thus will have more treatment options available to them. Research has recently shown that as little as one workout can help reduce fatigue levels and improve mood. In regards to weight management, with cancer treatment, some will lose weight, some will gain weight, um, but depending on where they are in their cancer treatment, exercise is still beneficial because it will help maintain muscle mass and strength, which as you can see, even if you look the same size, if your muscle mass isn't the same, your metabolism is going to be different as well as many other parameters. What if you don't feel like implementing lifestyle changes or exercising due to anxiety, depression, or other barriers? Anxiety and depression are major issues, but also common side effects of cancer treatment due to certain physical, hormonal, biochemical, and situational changes. And unfortunately, such barriers are very common. The studies show that as many as 35% of those with cancer have had no exercise in the last 30 days. Even without cancer, exercising regularly is hard, yet getting started earlier, even when not feeling like it is so important. One of the main barriers fear, asking, am I doing the right thing or hurting myself? I have so little energy, shouldn't I be spending it doing something else? Am I going to undo what the medical treatments have done for me by doing physical activity? Do I have access to needed equipment? Is it practical for me to drive 20 minutes to a gym? Do we even know what I can or should do? The final biggest barrier though is really motivation. Not that people don't want to exercise or don't know the importance, but rather it's not their highest priority, especially with how they are feeling. You know, there's this quote from Mike Tyson that says, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. 
And unfortunately, when you start going through chemotherapy, radiation, surgery, really the hits just keep coming. That all sounds rather challenging. How can people cope and motivate themselves and still keep it fun? So tips for addressing motivation include making it fun or social with friends, choosing activities that you like, monitoring your progress, and scheduling it into your life. All these things are important. Planning should begin at the time of diagnosis with these criteria in mind to build up before the treatments weaken you. And this is different for different people as far as what these interventions are going to be. And for those of you who are families, friends, caregivers, really no different than quitting smoking, it's far easier when those around you are quitting as well or doing the same thing. So really, if you want to help your loved one, you should help yourself as well. Those are some great suggestions. Are there risks involved that patients should be aware of for exercising? Yeah, there are risks and restrictions during certain chemotherapies, especially immune suppression. Um, and after certain surgeries, range of motion, weight restrictions, for which you may need guidance from cancer specialists, your surgeons, your oncologists, but activity is still important during these times, and if done correctly, can advance and enhance the recovery by maintaining your strength, your energy, your range of motion. And before and after cancer treatments, it's really rare to have any sort of formal restriction. What should be included in a regular routine for patients who want to start an exercise? So there's two ways to answer that question. What should be included in a daily workout or overall routine? And why is it important to have all of those elements together in a daily workout? So ideally you want to begin with five to 10 minutes of warm up, followed by the main bulk of your exercise course. And then you want to finish with a cool down. When designing a program for somebody, you want to include those four basic elements of the exercise program, which include strength training, cardiovascular training or endurance-based things, balance, and flexibility training. Um, of these, strength and flexibility are really the most important during active treatment. Strength, because adequate strength naturally will improve your cardiovascular training and balance, and of these, strength is the most important for maintaining independence, which is so valuable. Flexibility because loss of joint movements from scarring, fibrosis, from radiation and surgeries, and mobility is difficult to reverse and greatly impacts life. Especially now with COVID, we hear from people that they're afraid to join a gym or go to the gym and don't know where to begin with exercise. First, for general health, a gym or equipment is not required. Second, if you're not sure what to do, it may be good to see a physical therapist or other rehabilitation specialist for guidance, especially if you have pain or something that keeps you from exercising. They will do a formal assessment and help you develop a plan to address the barriers and limitations you have. Some personal trainers may have this skill as well, but make sure that they've worked with people that are similar to you before going that route. So throughout most of this talk, we completed my lower body strengthening workout without equipment. I worked the three most important muscle groups through body weight repetition to fatigue. Now my short term goal is to do about 200 toe raises, 200 squats, and two minutes of plank straight with long term goal of being able to continue playing basketball with those 20 years younger than me without too much pain. I'm not there yet but it is measurable and it's meaningful to me at this time. You may start with much less, need to use wall or arms to support yourself during certain exercises. Your goal may be to just get out of the seat on your own, to be able to play on the floor with your children or grandchildren. <sighs> Go for a walk with your loved ones. Note that it really only took five minutes of my day to do the strength training. And the stretching can honestly be done while watching TV. Well, Dr. Carter, it has been a pleasure interviewing you. Thank you for your time and expertise. Mm. And I look forward to speaking with you again on our next topic. Thank you very much.